now on the Chris Smith Show Open House. Yeah, the Sydney property market rose another 1.9% last month. This now takes the overall rise in dwelling prices for 2021 to 22%. It's red hot. Uh, As you probably know too, APRA, the banking regulator, will have seen enough. This week, they introduced measures to slow the boom, which could mean you're unable to borrow as much money as before. It's estimated it will reduce borrowing capacity for the average borrower by about 5%. So I thought we'd take a look at the impact of this new regulation and uh, all that stuff leading up to Christmas. Property. Harris Partners' Peter O'Malley has walked into the studio. Peter, good to have you here. Uh, Thanks, Chris. Good morning. Now, a reopening means what to the real estate industry for you? The real estate industry never really closed, so transactions were as uh, high over the winter lockdown period as they were at any other point in the cycle. So real estate agents, thankfully um, for real estate agents, were largely unaffected by the lockdown. We had to do business in a different manner, so there was no on-site auctions, there was no public open houses, all inspections were one-on-one, but it still operated. Uh, Prices still rose through that period and transaction volumes were pretty high. Okay, so 22% rise in dwelling prices for 2021 and then APRA says, well, they've seen enough. What did they do this week? Uh, They increased the serviceability buffer that home loan uh, borrowers are allowed to borrow from 2.5% to 3%. So if the bank gave you a loan offer with a mortgage rate of 2.5%, Chris. Uh, Previously, that was assessed at the rate of 5%. Um, Now that's 5.5%. Right. So as you say, that'll reduce borrowers' capacity to borrow by about 5%. It's not retrospective. It's only for new loans going forward. Uh So it'll take about four to six weeks, my banker tells me, for it to start showing up in the marketplace. Were they too slow to act? Look, they were between a rock and a hard place, to use a cliche, because of the lockdown. They probably wanted to act sooner. In hindsight, they probably should have acted sooner. But who would have thought that a property market would continue rising the way it did during that lockdown when the rest of the economy was uh, running in second gear? Quite extraordinary. Now, will prices fall as a result of this measure? It's only a small measure. This measure, as it was described to me yesterday, is the equivalent of tapping the brakes. They want to slow the property market down. They do not want to cause a crash. Last time APRA intervened in 2018, they caused a 15% correction in the property market. They have other avenues available to them to slow the market down if this measure doesn't work. They've already indicated they're ready to pull the trigger on that, but they'll stand back and watch now till Christmas, I suspect. So it'll be a clip on what happens, but it won't, we won't get to... Uh, we won't be reducing the market by over 10%, will we? And No, I, th- I think if you're reducing capacity by 5%, you might see the market stop rising. Um, I'm not even sure that it'll create a correction. This will just stop price rises. So y- we are probably looking at peak market conditions at the moment, if not past peak market conditions, because already buyers and sellers in the marketplace are conscious of the ramifications of these changes. So when do we see a change in supply? Because the the auctions that I went to prior to lockdown and the sales that I've seen through the lockdown at various key suburbs, I've been told that they're boomed, they've gone up by, you know, 5 6% more than what they thought. There were 20 buyers getting a contract, potential buyers getting a contract, which blows everyone out of the market. And I've just seen a lack of supply causing this. When's that going to change? Uh, look, it will change between here and Christmas as we're now clearly in the spring selling season and lockdown is over and people will feel more comfortable moving about. Right. Uh, what I'd say about stock levels is they have been tight, but that's because days on market are so low. So I heard a real estate agent agent the other day in the industry is running with an average days on market of nine days. That's amazing. And he sells three to $5 million properties and lots of them. And he's selling them on average in nine days. So his turnover is probably higher than it's ever been. But the appearance to the outsider of stock on market is very low. So obviously the first few bids that come in on something that just hits the market are so out of this world 
that the real estate agent is saying to the vendor, take it and take it now? Uh, well, the buyer's making themselves compelling to the vendor. So whilst it might, might be week one to the vendor, it can be month six to the purchaser. And by that stage, they're absolutely fed up yeah, and they're right. prepared to pay overs to secure the home. Okay, this is what's been happening. All right, Will is a mortgage broker and Will wants to be part of the conversation. Go ahead, Will. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Look, uh, I'm a mortgage broker and also tax accountant. Um, look, the, the assessment rate is actually 5.5 or 5.6 at the moment. It was previously assessed at 5.2, most banks, the big four like CBA, etc. But it's, it's, it's heading to 5.6, roughly, as if interest rate's going to be 5.6. That's how they're assessing the home loan. Uh, it's concerning um, and it's dangerous time. What do you mean concerning? It's not going to put the brakes on the market, is it? Well, it's, it's like saying, it's like you've got a credit card, Chris, a, a $10,000 credit card uh, on yourself. Um, if you're trying to borrow a house with a $10,000 limit credit card, it would reduce your ability to borrow $100,000 or more because you've got that credit card. Are they looking that closely at your lifestyle? Yes, 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 sir, because they're looking at your transaction. They want to see the transaction. If you've got a gym membership, they're asking you, are you going to cancel the gym membership? Are you going to cancel the Uber Eats meal? Are you going to... They're going through things wow. that... that you know, you know, it's a dangerous time. Okay. All right, Will, yeah. thank you very much. Yeah, they're not mucking around. Now, I want to talk about landlords quickly. They've borne the brunt of COVID in the rental market because it's fallen. What can landlords expect going forward? Uh, the international borders are set to reopen, as we know. International students, uh, mainly from China, I might add, are probably not due until early in the new year. But I think landlords are now looking at the worst of the rental market and will enjoy better conditions in 2022 right. and onwards. The, uh, the international borders will see the oversupply of dwellings, mainly apartments, as we know, in Sydney, absorbed, largely absorbed, and then that will put upward pressure on rent. So if you are a landlord and you've got a vacant property at the moment, it's probably prudent to only sign a six-month lease right. so that you can take advantage of better conditions early next year. <laughs> if you've been looking at my emails, I got asked that the other day. Uh, do you want to sign up your tenant for a longer lease because it's expired? And I thought, well, hang on a minute. Wait until international borders open and we'll uh, get back to the negotiating exactly. table. Good on you, mate. Thank you, Peter. Much appreciated. Thanks, Chris. Okay, from Harris Partners, Peter O'Malley. Hopefully that's been uh, advantageous for you and giving you a little bit of advice about what's ahead of us in terms of the property market.